This is part 171 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve images from database table and display them in a grid view control. This is continuation to parts 169 and 170, so please watch those videos before proceeding. Here is what we want to do. When this web page initially loads, we want to retrieve all the images from the database table and display them in a grid view control as you can see here. We want to display the image ID, name, the size in bytes and the image itself. Now, when we select a new image to upload using this choose file upload control and then when we click this upload button, we want that new image to be uploaded to the database table and then immediately this grid view control should refresh and then display that newly uploaded image. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. At the moment on this page we don't have a grid view control. So let's drag and drop it from the toolbox and the grid view control should be under data tab. Now, what are the columns that we want within this grid view control? We want ID, name, size and image. ID, name, size, these are going to be bound fields and the column that's going to display images is going to be a template field. So let's include the columns element within the grid view control and the first thing that we want is a bound field. Let's set the data field on that to ID, that's the name of the column to which we want to bound this data field, I mean bound field. And similarly, let's specify header text. Header text is also going to be ID. We also need bound fields for name, size. So here, the name of the data field is going to be name. And for size, it's going to be size. Header text for name is going to be name. And for size, it's going to be size. And within brackets, let's specify bytes so basically this indicates to the user that the size is in bytes. And to display the image itself, we are going to use a template field. And for this template field, let's set the header text. Let's set it to image. And for the template field, let's specify an item template. And within the item template, let's drag and drop an image control from the toolbox. So this is the control that will display the images. All right. For this element, let's go ahead and set height to 100 pixels and width also to 100 pixels. And let's set the image URL. So I'm going to set image URL to a string. Basically, I am going to use a data binding expression here. Now, we want to bind this binary data to this image element. Okay, so we are going to use a data binding expression here. And the data binding expression starts with angle brackets, percentage, hash. And this is going to be a string. So basically, we want to bind this binary data. So we need to specify that using data colon. So data colon image for slash PNG semicolon. So we are going to bind this to a base64 string. So base64. And to this, we will have to append the base64 representation of the byte array that we are going to get from this column image data. To convert that byte array to a base64 string, I'm going to use convert dot to base64 string function. And to this function, we are going to pass the data that's present in image data column. So to retrieve the data from image data column, we are using this eval function and the name of the column is image data. And if you look at this eval function, it returns that byte array as an object, but we know that it's a byte array. So I'm going to convert that to a byte array. So that byte array gets passed to this function and this function is going to convert that to a base64 string and that will be appended to this string right here and this image element will be able to display that image. So let's save our changes and now let's get to the code behind file. Within our code behind file, now let's include a private function to load all the images from the DB. So private void and let's call this load images. And here we're going to write some ADO.NET code. The first thing that we want to do is read the connection string from web.config file. So configuration manager dot connection string. So of the name of the connection string is dbcs. Let's read that. And now let's go ahead and create SQL connection object. 
let's call it con equals new SQL connection and to this let's pass the connection string. Now let's create a SQL command object. Let's call it cmd equals new SQL command and our SQL command is going to be select star from tbl images table and to this let's pass the connection object. Now let's open the connection and execute our command. So execute reader is going to return a SQL data reader object. So let's store that in a variable and let's set that reader as the data source for our grid view control and then call the data bind method. All right, so this function is going to load all the images from the DB. Now when the web page initially loads, we want to load all those images. So I'm going to call this function inside this page load event. So when it is the initial get request, we want to load all the images. And then when we click the upload button, the selected file should be uploaded to the DB and the grid view should refresh upon you know, successful upload. And that newly uploaded image should be displayed within the grid view control. So this is the piece of code that is executed when we click that button, upload button. And when it reaches this point, you know, we uploaded the image and we display the hyperlink and upload successful messages. At that point, we want to call our load images function, which is going to load the images and display them within the grid view control. So let's run this and see if the images gets loaded on the initial page load. At the moment, I think in the DB, we've got two images. So both of them should be displayed in the grid view control. Look at that, we get ID name, size, and the image itself. In addition, we also have ID name, size columns again. That's basically because we have set, we have not set auto-generate columns to false. So that's why it's auto-generating columns for us. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Auto-generate columns equals false. So let's save our changes, reload this page, and now we don't get those columns from the DB. All right, now let's go ahead and upload a new file. So I want to upload this image now. Let's click Upload. The image should be uploaded, and the grid view should refresh and display the image that we have just uploaded. So the, image, uh, the page is reloading. We get the newly uploaded image. Let's try one more, and click Upload. And look at that, we get an error. It says max maximum request length exceeded. So basically here, you know, what's happening is the default maximum file size that can be uploaded, you know, is exceeded. And that's the reason why we get this error. And to increase that limit, you know, by default, it's 4 MB. So if it's greater than 4 MB, then we are going to get this error. So we have to increase the max request length uh, that can be uploaded. And to do that, we use this HTTP runtime element in system.web and set max request length to whatever, you know, that suits your application. In this case, I have a number that's basically 1 GB. We set that in kilobytes. And, you know, we know that 1 megabyte equals 1024 kilobytes. So if we multiply 1024 with 1024, we get the number of kilobytes in a gigabyte. So that's the number of gigabytes. So let's, uh, kilobytes. So let's copy them and let's go to our web.config file. So within web.config file under system.web, I'm going to include HTTP runtime element and I'm going to set max request length equals the number, you know, that we see in the calculator. So that is equal to 1 GB. Now, if you're using IIS 7 and above, in addition to this setting, you also need to set max allowed content length. Okay, so, and that is present in system.webserver, security, request filtering, and request limits. So in configuration, let's include system.webserver. And under this, security, under that, request filtering, and under that, request limits. 
and we want to set max allowed content length and this setting is in kilobytes so I mean is in bytes so this setting max request length it's in kilobytes whereas this one is in bytes so if you want to set this to 1 GB then you multiply this number by another 1024 because 1 kilobyte has got 1024 bytes so that is the number of you know bytes in a gigabyte so let's copy that number and specify that as the value here and in addition to max request length you also need to set execution timeout there's a default setting I don't remember the exact number but if the request takes long time to process because you are uploading a large file and if it exceeds that default timeout then it's going to suspend the processing and you'll get an error so to avoid that you know increase this execution timeout to a value that suits your needs so here I have increased it to 3600 uh, seconds so let's go ahead and do that here execution timeout and I'm going to set that to 3600 alright so with all these changes let's run our page one more time now we should not get that error max request length exceeded so when the web page initially loads it should load all the images now if I try to upload another image it should upload without any problem so it's still uploading it and once the upload is successful it should reload the page and all the images including the one that we have just uploaded Thank you for listening and have a great day.